Chapter 3 of Lucky Lure at Arrow Point by Mary Dame Jamie picked up his suitcase and started to carry it, but it was too heavy. His grandmother put her hand beside his on the handle, and that made things better. They walked slowly around, along the wide wharf boards. Jamie didn't do too badly there, but the sound was something else again. He had to let go of the suitcase and keep all his mind on balancing. He limped. His bad leg began to ache and throb, and then he was homesick for the hospital. He caught his breath in a sob. It's only a few steps now, the old lady encouraged, and there's a surprise when we get there. You'll never guess. Jamie perked up and started walking again. Your house is pretty, he managed, as he reached the gate. I like your garden, too. Mrs. Turner was pleased. Always remember to keep... Keep the gate closed, dear, she cautioned, smiling. The goats get in if we leave it open. Now come in, laddie. The surprise is in the kitchen. Jamie wanted to run right into the house, but he couldn't. He had to get up the porch steps first. The sweat was running down his hot face by the time he got to the top, but his grandmother pretended not to notice. She opened the front door and called. And then Jamie forgot all about being tired and being homesick. The fattest, cutest puppy wobbled out to him. He knelt down and cradled the puppy in his arms. <clears throat> and a pink tongue looked at his face. Oh, Grandma, is he yours? He belongs to a boy named Jamie Turner. Of course, he'll have to take care of him. Captain Jones brought him up on the boat this morning. Do you think you'll like him? Oh, Grandma, I've wanted a puppy for years and years. I'll have to give him a name, won't I? Can I call him Minto, do you think, after the boat, I mean? Well, now that's an idea, Minto Turner. Hmm, you can't go around calling Minto Minto very well. But Minty now, how about calling him Minto for best and Minty for every day? What if I went around calling Minto and the boat came instead? Jamie and his grandmother laughed together. Jamie was so busy playing with the puppy that he had no time to look around the house. He could barely tear himself away from the little animal long enough to wash his hands in the blue enamel basin. He dried his hands on a funny towel that rolled when he pulled it. When your father was a little boy, he would roll the towel until the dirty spots he had made were all hidden. Jamie looked around him. Why, his father had really been in this kitchen. A little boy just his own size. It was a very new thought. Jamie looked at the table and his eyes grew big and round. There were scones all buttery and hot from the oven. A deep blue dish was brimful of raspberry jelly. A tall glass of milk waited for him beside a yellow plate. Jamie climbed onto his stool. He watched his grandmother as she bowed her head and said a little prayer of thanks for food. Then his thin hands reached out for one of the scones, and he spread it thick with jelly. Did you make this, Grandma? he asked as he licked his fingertips, where a bit of jelly clung. Yes, I did, Jamie, and we'll make some more this summer, you and I. We'll go in the rowboat when the berries are ripe and take a picnic lunch. I haven't liked going alone these last few years. It sounded like a wonderful thing to do, but Jamie could only nod. He kept eating and eating, and he drank every drop of his milk. That milk tastes different, Grandma, but it's good. He wiped the milk from his mouth with the back of his hand. It's goat's milk. When you get a bit stronger, you'll be able to help me take care of them. Jamie's face fell. He didn't like that idea at all. They sounded big. I'm tired, Grandma, he complained. Of course you are. It was a very long journey for you. Now, did you know I am going to give you the very same room that your father used to have when he was a little boy? He left a lot of his things there, and I've saved them for you. Jamie smiled across the table at his grandmother. She was nice, though he was getting tired all over again. His eyes felt heavy, and he yawned. He slid down off the bench and limped across the kitchen. Minty followed him. Now, this is your room, laddie. Mrs. Turner said, opening a white door that led off from the kitchen. I painted the walls fresh, and I put a new rag rug on the floor. But the quilts are the same ones your father used, and it is his bed, too. Oh, gee! Jamie couldn't say much more to save his soul. 
He stood on one foot and blinked at the high, narrow bed, covered with a red quilt with white stars on it. He looked at the books beside the bed and at the red and white hooked rug on the floor. Grandma, Jamie managed when he had looked a bit, I'm glad I came. There was a funny growling sound from under the bed. Jamie started to be scared, but Mrs. Turner laughed and scolded at the same time. Stop that, you villain. Stop that right away. She bent down and reached for fat little Minty and the red sock that he was tearing. Minty hung on to it and growled a baby growl. Drop it, Minty, Jamie ordered, and to their surprise, the red sock dropped onto Miss, into Mrs. Turner's hand. Jamie laughed and so did his grandmother, but then she said softly, Now into bed with you. Jamie tried, but the bed was too high. His lip began to tremble. Jamie, that red stool under your bed is just right for climbing on. Try it and see. With it as a step, Jamie was into the bed in no time at all. His grandmother tucked the red and white starred quilt around him and kissed him good night. All of a sudden, Jamie felt very strange. It wasn't a bit like the hospital, and he felt so lonely. He didn't know his grandmother very well, and mother and father were so many miles away. Would it be all right if Minty stayed with me for a while, he asked in a very small voice. Why, of course, it is his bedtime, too. I'll bring in his box and put it by the bed. He may start crying in the middle of the night. He's never been away from his mother before. If he starts crying, just speak to him softly. Then he'll know he's not alone. While she was talking, she brought in Minty's box and settled him beside Jamie's bed. And before she could get back into the kitchen, they were both asleep. In the middle of the night, Jamie woke up. He didn't know where he was. It was dark in his room, and outside, in the pitch-black night, he heard something or maybe a lot of somethings. Jamie went stiff with fear. There was a barking, whining, wailing horror that went up, up, up. Jamie crouched under the covers. The whole night seemed filled with terror. He couldn't think where he was, but it was not in his hospital bed. There was no nice nurse to come hurrying to his side. Then gradually he remembered, but he was still afraid. He knew he could call his grandmother and she would come, but he was too scared to open his mouth. The sounds outside died down, and right in his own room another sound began. This was like crying made by something small. Then Jamie remembered Minty, and bravely, he inched up out of the covers and leaned as far out of bed as he dared. He put down his hand and touched fur, warm and thick and soft. The puppy stopped crying, and a soft, wet tongue licked at his fingers. A bit of the fear of stiffness went out of Jamie with the warmth of his love for Minty. He closed his thin hands around the fat little body, and with all his strength he lifted Minty in beside him. The puppy got as close to Jamie as he could, which meant wiggling right inside his pajamas, and he snuggled down and went to sleep. But Jamie didn't. The noise outside began again, and Jamie felt sick with fright. Grandma, he tried to call, but his voice came out in a tiny squeak. He couldn't help it, he started to cry. And quick as a wink, his grandmother was in the room, holding the lamp in her hand. Ah, oh, Jamie, I thought those creatures would waken you. You're not used to them, and it's a fearsome noise they make. Why, when your grandfather first brought me to live along this lake, they used to frighten me green. But one day I saw one, and I waved my apron at him. He ran so fast I wasn't scared of them any more. It's just their way of singing. What are they? Why do they sing so awful? I guess there's about fifty of them. Well, no, she answered, setting the lamp down on the dresser and settling herself in the low red rocker beside the bed. They are coyotes, slinky, scared things, somewhat like dogs. There'll not be more than two or three of them, and I guess they can't help howling so fearfully. There they go again. Jamie covered up his ears. They'll stop soon. If we said boo to them, they'd tuck their tails between their legs and run. And speaking of tails, there ought to be a fat little tail in this box, but there isn't. I don't suppose you have any idea where it might be. Jamie began to giggle. Minty was scared too, and he's littler than I am. Well then, we'll leave him where he is tonight. And now those coyotes have finished singing. I'll leave you the lamp turned down low and get back to my bed. And not one word out of either of you, two boys, until morning.
The end of chapter 3.